Hi everybody, this is Eva Montavo. My company is Nourish Yoga and Wellness. Today's video is right from my own bed, uh, sharing some strengthening and stretching exercises for the legs and the hips. I'm doing this from bed because I want to show that everybody can do this, whether or not they can get, get down to the mat on the ground. If you wanna do this on the ground, it's perfectly fine, but almost everybody I know does sleep in bed, so it's a good option. Um, to create strength, we need some resistance. So my choice today will be a stretchy band. You may have gotten these from physical therapy. You can pick them up at um, different sporting goods stores or just online. If you have one that's a long strap, you can do that too, that's not a circle. And if you don't have anything stretchy, it's okay. You can use just a regular strap. Uh, this one happens to be just a regular yoga strap, six about six foot long, or even a long scarf. And you're gonna create your own resistance using your arms. Now I happen to have a wrist injury, so I'm gonna show you a little trick that I use um, to not have to use my hands as much in case you have something like, you know, arthritis or something in your hands. And that's simply tying a loop in your scarf or your band, if it doesn't have one already. Um, and then a lot of yoga belts have these little D-rings that you can do the same thing with. Um, if you need help with that, please let me know. All right, so let's get started. Laying back on the bed, start with what I call constructive rest. Uh, or yoga world cause constructive rest. So we're just bending the knees, setting the feet on the, on the bed, and let the arms rest wherever they're comfortable. So just take a moment to feel whatever sensations you feel in your body and to connect to your breath. I like to spend some time slowly deepening the breath and then slowly releasing it. Take two more rounds of that. And just come back to a natural breath whenever you're ready. So some concerns I've heard are um, strength of the legs and the hips in order to get out of bed or to step up on a curb. So we're gonna work a little bit on that today. So before we do that, let's warm up. Just hug one knee into the chest. I'm starting with the right. And, and we're just kind of pulling in and then gently pushing away. So pull in and push away. Pull in, push away. And then pull it in, point and flex through the ankle. I'm gonna straighten out my left leg so you can see, but you don't have to. Point and flex through the ankle few times and then rotate the ankle around. Good, and reverse direction. So if you take um, any of my classes, you'll see that this is something I do pretty regularly in mat and chair classes. As your foot comes to stillness, take the right hand to the right knee and make some circles, beginning to warm up through the hip. And you're just taking a few in one direction and then reversing and going the other direction. Good. And then come to center, take both hands behind the thigh and just straighten out the leg so you can kind of see where the sensations happen. A lot of times it's right along the back of the leg, the back of the knee, uh, where we may have tight hamstrings. And then the bend that knee. Good and then release that leg. So you can be bent knee. Um, as we bring the left leg in, the right knee can stay bent or you can stretch the leg out, whatever feels best for you here. And we'll do the same warm up here. Point and flex the ankle. Sometimes you hear some pops and clicks, especially if you're doing this first thing in the morning. And then rotate the ankle around. A few times one direction and then switch directions. As you let the foot come to stillness, I forgot this part, pull it in, 
and gently press away. So you're creating a little resistance by pull, pulling in with your hands. And then as you press away with your hands, your leg is pressing back. Good, and then one more time. We actually are starting to warm up through the lower abdominal core area too. And then the left hand takes that left knee around in a few circles. And then reverse direction. And then take both hands behind that thigh and stretch out the leg. Again, just noticing how this side feels. Maybe you notice that one side's different than the other. There's no reason to diagnose or fix anything. Just observe, notice what you, what's going on here. And then bend the knee, release. We'll take a little windshield wiper, letting the knees go right and left. All right. And now I'm going to reach for that strap. So I'm going to pick this one. It's a stretchy strap. It's from a company, I don't know, where I bought it recently. I'll probably put that in the comments. Um, and it does stretch. Now I happen to have a wrist injury. So I'm going to give you a little modification for anybody who wants the same thing. You don't want to put too much pressure on the hands. So all we're doing is looping the strap, the belt, or the band on the sole. In this case, I'm starting with the right foot. And then we're gonna hold on with the hands or the forearms, okay? So I'm gonna do forearms today. And the idea is we're gonna pull in, create some tension, and then push out. Not necessarily up, so we're pulling in and pushing out. Of course, if your hands are holding the strap, you can do the same thing, holding the strap, bringing your elbows down. Okay, so let's do that. I'd say let's go for five times. You can certainly do more. You can go up to um, 10. Four. Good. And five, and then hold. So keep a little bend in the knee, press up through the heel, draw the toe back. Maybe the leg comes up a little higher. Maybe the opposite leg stretches out so your choice here continue to breathe for three rounds of breath good now we're going to take this across so taking the right leg to the right I'm going to now take the straps in my opposite hand the left hand because I want to create some resistance this is kind of the opposite of what I normally teach, but because I want to create some resistance in the hip, I'm going to take the straps in the left hand or on my forearm and then just take the leg out to the right. So we're creating some resistance, pulling out to the right and then bring it back to center. You may feel this in your hip. I'm going to take five rounds here, two, three, four, and on the last one, hold. So just kind of pressing into it, only to the point where you feel resistance, tension, but no pain, no strain. Remember to breathe. And three rounds of breath. And then bring it back up to center. You may find you're also working through your shoulders and your core, which is good. And now I'm gonna switch. So normally I would take the, you know, the straps in the left hand to come over into a twist, but I'm gonna take the, this band into my right hand and I'm still using the right leg. Um, so I can use my hand to hold on to this, elbow down and then across the body and then back up. So across the body just means as far as your left hip or further if you want to okay and then up so i'm going to come back to my forearm three two one hold here you can now switch the strap into the left arm and let that go into a bigger twist 
Pause here, three rounds of breath. Good, and then bring it back up to center. Bend the knee, release the strap, stretch out the leg. You may feel quite a difference from the right side to the left side. You might, okay? I'm not gonna tell you what to feel, I'm just telling you what I feel. All right, and of course we wanna repeat that whole process on the other side. So left leg and the strap. And first we're pulling it in and then pushing it out. Good, remember you can do holding your hands with the strap. So for example, if you have a rigid strap that's not stretchy, all you're doing is pull in and then with resistance push away. Okay, so take three more. Push. Good. And on the last one, hold. So a little bend in the knee, press up through the heel, draw the toes back. Maybe the leg up is up higher, maybe the other leg extends along the that but you choose those variations as they fit for your body today. Three rounds of breath. Notice if you're gathering tension in, in other parts of the body and see if you can soften that. Good. All right, now I'm gonna continue to demonstrate with this non-stretchy strap just to show you so I'm using my left leg extended. I'm gonna take the straps into the right hand and then bring my elbow out to the side. And I'm just gonna kind of resist as we take that left leg out to the left and then pull it back up. Good, five rounds. Remember you can go less, you can go more. I'd say three to 10, three. Four, and if you want to do more, you can do various sets throughout the day. Five, especially if you're really trying to work it, work through the strength. All right, and on the last one, let's pause here. And just pressing out through the heel, letting, noticing that with this leg extended, the other hip wants to come up. So I'm gonna work a little bit at bringing that hip and that shoulder down on the right side. Good, and then when you're ready, gently bring it up. All right, and now it's when we're gonna take it across. So this, the left hand holds onto the strap, and then we're gonna take that leg across. Again, create resistance, so pull at the same time as you're pressing with your foot and your leg into that, and then bring it back up. So that's one, two, I'm gonna switch back to the stretchy one because I really like the way that one feels too. Good. Three, plus I need to take a break off my wrist. Four. Five, hold. This is okay to take now that those straps in your right hand and let yourself go further if you want to into a deeper twist. So my actual lift, left hip is lifting up off of the bat. My left shoulder is staying down too. Let's go and make sure you get three rounds of breath here. Good. And then slowly bring it up. Good. Bend the knee, release the strap, shake out both legs. Notice how they feel. I hope that they feel a little more even now if they didn't before. Draw both knees into the chest, give them a hug. And then we'll start that gently press away and then pull back in. So just using a little bit of resistance with your hands will help make uh, activate those lower abdominal muscles as well as other areas of the body. So just pulling it in, pushing away, and then pulling rock side to side. All right, one more set of poses I really like to do is called bridge pose. 
And the idea of bridge pose is that we can press our feet into the ground and lift our hips away from the ground. Again, using some strength all around this girdle area of um, our tops of our thighs, our core, our glutes, okay? So walk your heels closer to your glutes. And first of all, firm up your belly. So you're almost like you're pressing down into the bed and trying to flatten your low back. Not completely, but I just want you to get that sense of everything kind of drawing in here. And then if it's helpful, you can bend your elbows and press the back of your arms into the bed. Because the bed is pretty squishy depending on your mattress, right? So you're gonna come up and then roll back down. All right, so let's take an inhale when we're down and then exhale. Firm it up here, push up. Good, inhale back down. So going for a few more rounds, you can take this. And if you find you don't need the elbows drawing in, you can actually reach the arms up as we come up and release as we come back down. Good, taking one more. And release, good. One other variation is taking the feet wider, toes slightly turned out just a little so that the angle of your thighs and the angle of your toes is the same. And then again, lifting and rolling back down. Good, so that just kind of takes it into a different part, um, more work into the outer hips. So again, inhale here, exhale, lift. Inhale down, exhale, lift. Last, last round, lift and hold. You can hold for a few rounds of breath, maybe beginning to roll the shoulder blades underneath you, making sure, as I just didn't do, to keep your head neutral, so look up toward the sky, your ceiling. And then when you're ready, you're gonna untuck those shoulder blades, roll back down. Bring both knees into the chest again, rock side to side, nice release. And then now with the feet wider apart, you can do those big windshield wipers again. So maybe you start to notice the areas where you've worked today. And I like from this wide, wide um, windshield wiper to pause on one side and really feel the extension on the front of that one thigh. This is the flexor. This is what lifts our leg up uh, when we're walking or taking a step, um, like to walk up the stairs and then go the other side. So again, right in the front of the thigh where it connects to your torso. Good. And then coming back to center, I'd like to end with well, maybe two poses. So my favorite release for the hips and legs is to, is pigeon um, reclined pigeon pose. So bend the right knee, cross the right ankle over the left thigh. I have my foot flexed in an L shape to keep my knee activated and protect it. And then just staying here or bringing that left thigh up and hugging behind the left thigh with both arms. You actually don't have to use your arms. You could just use this, the work of the left thigh to bring that right thigh up at an angle. Good. Pausing here, a few rounds of breath. Also feel free to wiggle or lean side to side. Good. And when you're ready to release, take both legs up toward the sky, point and flex the ankles, move things around. Good. You can do the same thing with your hands. Might feel good since we've been holding onto straps to open and close the hands and move the wrists. And then resetting, feet down on the ground or the bed, left ankle over right thigh. Ankle is flexed in an L position. The left knee is kind of reaching away from you. You can absolutely stay here. But if you decide you want that deeper stretch, you're lifting the right leg, bringing it in a little closer. And again, either holding the back of the right thigh with your hands 
or a strap. Whoops, I can't even hold on to that, or just the effort of your legs. Pausing two rounds of breath. Now feel free again to wiggle side to side. This is one of my very favorite stretches. I probably do this in some form every day. And then one more time, stretch it out. Good, and then just kind of curl the toes, make fists with the hands, and then spread the toes, spread the fingers. Good, and then circles. Good. And the very last pose, just to get a sense of how this is all feeling in your body, is to come into butterfly with feet together, knees open. Arms can be by the sides, or hands can be on belly, just a few things, or arms overhead. Just pausing for a few minutes, a few breaths, and then observing all the different sensations from the work that you've done today. And then to end, bring the arms back down, stretch out the legs, and then just observe how that feels. You can certainly let yourself rest here in Shavasana, final relaxation for about at least three to five minutes or more. And again, if you feel like there's too much tension on your low back, you can always keep the knees bent, which is what I like to do. So always giving yourself some chance, uh, some time to let all of the work you've done settle in before you move about your day. When you are ready to get up, I'd like for you to notice how you get up. So many of us do this like big, uh, you know, crunch as we come up. It's really nice to just roll to one side, pause for a breath, and then gently use your arms and your legs to press up into a seated position. So I hope that helps. Give it a try. Let me know what you think if you do try it and have a great day.